Why every entrepreneur should negotiate with his kids coming up now. Hi, I'm Oliver, startup coach at askstartup.com and welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please consider subscribing and pushing that notification bell because otherwise, you know, YouTube will not let you know when we publish new videos. Now, I have been in lockdown as many of you as well. And during that time, I have been 24 seven with my kids. Now, they of course started negotiating a lot with me and I was wondering why is it so difficult for me to get to the point in the negotiations with them as compared to when I'm doing business negotiations with partners and customers. That actually led to the fact that I had to do some research on why is it so challenging with my kids. And it's nothing to do with my kids or your kids, it's just kids in general have a different way of negotiation. And if you learn how to ne negotiate with them, you will be a much better negotiator at work as well. So let's go and start. Why is it that kids are different? So let's consider you start off with your work setup. What are negotiations like in your work setup? Well, most of the time, you know that negotiations are coming up. So you are prepared, you know the topic, and you know that you are really focusing on the topic or the solution or the interest that you're trying to achieve. That is your main focus. When you come home or when you are at home and when you are negotiating with your kids, the situation is actually different. First of all, kids really know how to trigger emotions because they know they cannot get fired. You cannot fire them. Hence, they play a different league with you. They know exactly which, where to pull which trigger, which makes negotiations more emotional and hence more erratic. The second thing that is different is that you are having repetitive discussions on the same thing. It's, I don't want to go to bed now. I want to watch this part of the program. I don't want to eat my vegetables. You know, all these things that happen all the time and they come up every bloody day, right? Hmm. I know you've been there. I have been there. I am there. But nonetheless, this actually makes negotiations really tricky because if it's the same thing every day and they keep coming up with the same thing, it's hard to come to, a, to an agreement. There are ways, of course, but it, you need to learn and to practice them. The third thing that is different is that these negotiations usually happened when you're unprepared. It's like in the middle of nowhere, they start to, I want this donut, I want this hamburger, I want this French fries, I want to watch this TV program now. And you're like, wait a minute, didn't we agree to go outside or didn't we agree to do your, our homeworks first? Didn't we agree to work all together and then do something? No. And that makes it really difficult because you cannot plan, you cannot have a strategy aligned up in such a situation. That actually made me start to think, what is it that makes it so different or so difficult for me to negotiate at home? And then I started to do some research and I'm going to link an article down below that you might want to read through. That is a Harvard Business Review article on how to negotiate with your kids. I happened to learn that the tactics you learn to negotiate on a professional level actually do apply for you at home as well. However, we're not using them. Why is that? First of all, it is difficult sometimes to create a win-win situation because let's say it's cold outside and you want your kids to wear a hat, then you will force them to wear a hat and they really don't like it. Or you know that they should eat that vegetable because it's healthy or they should drink water and not a soft drink now or not have a dessert and no ice cream because it's too much sugar for the day. And then it's really, really hard to come up with a win-win situation. However, this type of approach actually works once you start realizing it and not putting like a top down approach, which kids really, really, really do not like. Another thing I happen to realize is that if I start to negotiate with my kids is I start talking and talking and talking and not letting them talk as if they are not able to negotiate by themselves. They are, they are very good at it and they really like to explain their point of view. And it's also important to generate the win-win situation that you let them talk and let them explain their point of view and their interest. Once you know this, then of course, I'm much more able to get or create a win-win situation. Also, I know everybody, you've been there, I've been there, you get angry at your kids because they start to watch TV even though they're not allowed to or they become angry at you because you promise them to play a game and you really do not have the time to do it now. And the negotiations that are in a emotional distress time are really hard and you shouldn't do them. But I had to learn this as well. So I really have to cool down 
and then start talking and negotiating with the kids once I know what I want from them and once they know what they want from me. That's the reason why you should not fill the gaps and let them think and talk. Because once they start talking, they start to explain themselves. And it is very difficult because usually if people are emotional, there is a certain basic emotion behind it, let's say fear or uncertainty. And that is what you need to figure out. And it's already difficult for an adult to express this type of feeling. How, imagine how difficult it is for your kid. But take this to the entrepreneur level. Take it to the company and business level. If you know that your partner, your discussion partner, your negotiation partner, your customer has the same situation as your kid, they are in a, an area of uncertainty for the moment. They have certain interests that you might not be aware at that current moment. So you have to learn and listen to them and get their interests so that you can negotiate a win-win situation for all. So things that really work well with my kids was I was first putting an anchor to them in terms of I want you to eat that vegetable or I want you to do your homeworks. And then I was giving them choices like if you do your homeworks, we can either do uh, play a game or we can, you know, learn something different, a new skill today. Or we're going to I'm going to teach you how to fly a drone or I'm going to teach you how to ride a bike or I'm going to uh, play a game with you or we're going to eat uh, some sweets, whatever it is. This made it much easier for the kids to come back to me with a positive response. Again, do this translation to your customers, for instance. If you give them several choices, what you could offer and what they could get from you, then it's much, much easier for them to pick a certain offer. So it's the opposite of saying, this is my product, take it or leave it, that's it. It might be much wiser to have three different offerings for the same type of product, but they can choose on the level that they're actually expecting or willing to buy. Think like you are negotiating with your kids and take this to the entrepreneur level. Then you're there. Another way that I managed to negotiate very successful was I was showing them that they actually got a better bargain by complying right now or doing the things they should do compared to if they would have not done it. I said to them, look, if you just do now 10 minutes of instrumental practicing, like doing the piano or the guitar, it's much, much easier than if you would have to do one hour next week. Then they really happen to realize, oh yeah, it's much faster. I'm done 10 minutes and I'm out again. Also, and I'm sure everybody with kids knows this, they are really, really into fairness. But fairness does not necessarily mean half and half. If this kid gets a bigger ice cream than this kid, of course, hell breaks loose. The same is true, actually, if you look for a customer or partners. If that one partner is getting a better deal than the other one and they figure out, oh my God, you're in big, big trouble. Hence, always think of how are you going to mutually get the best win-win situation and prevent a clash at the end, right? Which learnings can I now translate to my business concerning negotiation skills when I'm having the next discussion with my customers and or partners? First of all, I try not to be emotional at all. I really try to focus on the solution and my interest and my opponent's interest so that we get the best win-win situation out of it. I also try to plan ahead. I try not to get trapped into unexpected negotiations, even though they will come. And I try to prevent repetitive discussions. Because if we're doing circles on the same thing over and over and over, we're not getting anywhere and it's not actually efficient use of time for us. Usually in business, we don't get repetitive discussions except for, let's say, pricing. And that only happens if the price is discussed in the absence of value. If you add value, you have a discussion around the value and that should normally not take you into a loop all the time. So what are your experience when negotiating with your kids versus your business partners? Please leave a comment down below. Thank you and see you next time.